Welcome to BBC's Going Live with Philip Schofield and whatever her name was. <laughs> you bastard. I was, I, just about to, I was just about to say the welcome and you did it. Oh <laughs> I love you though, Rowan. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to Angelic Real. Yeah. Let's we'll start again. Angelic Real. Welcome, Thank everyone. Anyone. Whoever. Wherever. We're here. We're now. This is all. This is you. And I'm eating sausage <laughs> and mash. Nice. <laughs> Frantishak? He's, 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 he's muted. Um, he... Okay, Frantishak, go ahead, start with the uh, meditation. Okay. Yeah. You like these women ordering around? <laughs> you are in a good mood today, Rowie. <laughs> oh, I don't take orders very well. You gotta treat me nice. Remember? I'm a nice one. Why, are we, why haven't you posted any of your performances on videos? What, my live performances? Yeah, record them, post them, post them on YouTube. Because I've been off sick for the past year. All the old ones, never no problem. <coughs> oh, I haven't got many of the old ones, they're all in Germany on other people's computers. Doesn't matter, I want to see anybody, want to see you. No, no, I mean the recordings and stuff are on other people's ah. computers and stuff. All in Germany. That's when I lived in Europe. <coughs> mm -hmm. in, in England, all you get is fighting. It's awful. Oh. It's horrible to need you here. Horrible. Unless you're a ninja. Uh -huh. Or some superstar wanker. You're eating something? He's Sorry, yeah, I am eating the sausage. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> this is a new language. That was <laughs> sausage language, that was. <laughs> you eat them also? Bradverse special. <laughs> okay. Sorry, fan, I'm probably not helping, am I? Alright. Groove it. If you're channel an angel, you must show us your face. Okay? Frankie? I must. There is no must. There is no must. What is it? That, yeah, yeah. No, there is there is only only a feeling. If he if if he wishes to show then it has. So it, 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 you know, it has, you know the, the energy that comes through the face is, is very strong. Yeah, and that's why I'm asking. I need. We need to see his face. You know. No. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny the way. It's funny the way you ask, though. It's an order. It's an order. It's an order. <laughs> Asking an order is two completely different things. It's an, it's an order, and it's a, a question. It's all all together, and it's you. They had this confusion in nineteen um, forties Germany. Yeah. <laughs> Should we mute ourselves or just uh, just um, after the minute hey. okay like that? Hey, the time will come. It's about timing. I don't know. 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 I don't know.
together and open up. It's a beautiful intention that you're putting in and uh, joining in here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. And you are waiting for something to happen or you wish it to happen and you know you have the right for the choice always. And it's not happening right away instantaneously. Change the vibration that comes first as impatience and fill yourself with passion to the process, to observe the process, observe the change. Because you know it's coming. I feel it coming deep inside, really deep. It's really becoming very clear. Play with the energy. Be free, yes. Um, Poopy. As a kitten, play around. May you introduce yourself to us, please? Mm. 
this is about uh, aligning your hearts together. This is a co-creation. This is unique experience. You can say this moment has made yeah. But it will never come again in this form. So does the name really matter? So you are an experience, not an entity. We all are out. Experiences. Okay. Experience is only a thing that's real. Okay. I have a question. If I see an orb, does it mean it's an angel or could be any other entity? It can be any other or it's just like it's just translation for you high vibration okay the orb that I saw could it be an angel or something different it could be whatever meaning you assign to whatever you see whatever I see you go with it Decide, choose, and don't doubt. Because it was different. You make a choice and make it right. Okay, it's whatever you perceive. Because the orb that I saw was different than other, any other orb. It has tassels from beneath it, tassels coming out of it, you know? And it gave me love vibration, it gave me peaceful vibration. I wasn't frightened at all. I to see it, I was happy. Yes, uh, the orb was you. Was me, nice. Yes. Okay. Cute. And uh, if I want to attract more orbs, just by intention? Yes, intention and patience and passion for the process patience that's how you release expectation you just enjoy the process okay it happened long time ago I want more of it yes. so enjoy where you are right now because that is part of the process great I have a Namaste. question. There is only right now. Yeah. My question, the other question is, um, we reside now on 4D, but the, the people about us, the families and everybody, they're a different vibration. They're, we see them on, in 3D. But by giving good intentions, sending them love and good vibes, they will be raised to 4D with us? Why? You see them 3D. Uh, then the that are they static pictures for you? Static? Yes, you know, static they always, holograms. You know what I mean? They're not like in human colony. We all are one. They are out of us. We want to call them. I will explain to you something about human colony. You understand my question? Yes, I understand it. So what to do? You are always in human colonies from a certain point. And all you see is a representation of that. Human colonies is just a label for the test if you are willing to go beyond what you see and touch.
and uh, all of you prove that you are not only willing, you are passionate about going beyond. So move with us. Move beyond the labels, move beyond boundaries. It seems that a lot of people are getting caught up with the labels and assuming that all that they see is different to what they are perceiving as the human colonies. But the yeah. human colonies are just another dimensional aspect of what we see now. We live yeah. in every dimension. We can perceive every dimension. We are just choosing to focus most of our consciousness on this particular interaction that we're in right now. If yeah. we wish to move past it, we can move forward. We can move up to all of the realms of the angels, to even to the lower dimensions if we choose. We can yeah. go wherever we wish, because spirit has no boundaries. There is no label that restricts spirit. Spirit surpasses the box. Spirit can shapeshift into the box, but can turn into another box, which can then explode all of the boxes out of the way. We have no need for these labels anymore. They are just a tool to get us to the point that we're at now. And this point that we're at now is discussing that there is no more labels, there is no more boundaries, there is no more solidity. We are fluid, we are we are everything. Beautiful, thank you. You are your higher self. You are your over soul. You are the over of your over souls. And up to infinity. Everything is one and everything is interconnected. Up and down. Every vibration that you give changes every other vibration slightly. The only things that are are set in stone are change. Change and now. Yeah, it's not set in stone but it's your choice that you made because you wanted to experience and that can be no experience without change. Yes. See it goes up to the infinity, up to beyond what you can imagine the vibration always goes higher and higher and includes more and more and when it includes everything in total there's our all possibilities in one cancelling each other there is no experience in the highest level. It's the reset. Reset. There, there you are heading. And there, there is where you are coming from. There, there is where from you create every moment. 
from darkness, from no experience. It is calming and it is beautiful. One of the most and you can see it as such just because you come out of it automatically billions of times per second. Yes, what is your question? It wasn't um, so much a question, it was more of an observation of <coughs> the beauty of, of spirit. It, we are spirit experiencing ourselves, experiencing ourselves while traveling into different dimensions, experiencing ourselves. We are just, we are just experience. We are constantly changing, constantly experiencing these potentially the same things just in a slightly different way to understand it in a different perception we are always always experiencing when we wake up in the morning it's a new day it's a new experience we may stub our toe we may wake up and have a smile on our face it's a brand new experience in which we we get to experience the new day and learn that everything is as it is as long as we follow what we we believe to be our true way we will always be experiencing okay. hello i have a question yes yes i um understand when you say that um to raise your vibration so you can and um, when you raise your vibration then uh, you be able to uh, experience um, other um, reality uh, but how can I how can I do that uh, easily uh, knowing or uh, perceiving that I am still confined into this um, 3D reality uh, that I'm living and um, surrounded by uh, people, 3D reality people interacting with me, and uh, I'm interact. I have to interact with them as long as I live or I am in this physical body. You said first that you understand this concept, and then you said that you don't understand this concept. And both is true at the same time. You see, you don't have to understand for it to be true. You are in, as you call it, it's not precise, but we can do it for now. You are in 3D, but you are aware that it's just your projection. So it's not 3D anymore for you. You see yourself in others, you see yourself in people, in things. In words, everything answers your immediate vibration. This awareness, this knowing is part of your automatic mind now. So you can't really forget that. You can't really perceive your world as 
3D, as you say, anymore. Right. But it's part of it, because you chosen to remember that. But that is just a choice, and you should ask yourself, does it really serve you? Mm -hmm. Right. No, it doesn't. Okay, then imagine everyone you see, your family, your friends, people in the streets, that everyone has a connection to higher beings. Everyone sees multiple realities at the same time, not just one. And uh, the one that you see through them is just one that is being presented to you for a reason. It's your reflection. Everyone has unlimited potential. And oh. where you put your boundaries on others, that's how you will perceive them. So see them as light beings, see them as oh. angels. I see. see them as messengers. Oh. See them as yourself. Uh -huh. So, so just um, so what I get um, from this message is that all I have to do is change my perception. Of, mm. um, you don't have to do anything. You uh -huh. just can allow. just allow uh -huh. yourself to believe it's already all right. It has been already taken care of by you because you are here, you are hearing this message. So you are confirming it to yourself that you already know. And you are repeating that to yourself over and over because you are trying to deny it. Because you, for some reason, believe it is painful for you to leave the old paradigm. Mm. Why? Why? Hello, experience. Uh, this is Noah again. I have a question. How close yeah. am I to channeling, please? I need to know. Doesn't matter who you wish to channel. You are always channeling anyway. You are channeling your higher self. As you have heard before, no thought comes from any other place than your higher mind. Uh -huh. It's flow. You should concentrate on the moment and take a dig deep what it means for you, what you prefer to see it as every moment has a purpose and not just one and you can choose the purpose for you it's the intention that you put in Uh, am I blocking the vocal uh, language also, or is it uh, going to take some time? It's coming out, just try, to relax, don't bother yourself with 
Okay. See when you hear yourself in a recording as a child, what do you see? What do I see? What do you hear? Is it uh, embarrassing? Is it uh, no, what emotions no, no, no. does it generate when you hear yourself in old recording? No, nothing embarrassing. I'm having an experience. And uh, is it fun to hear yourself in old recording? Yeah, of course. Yes, because you can see how you have moved from there to where you are. And you can see yourself throughout the process. And you can see that you have quite enjoyed the change. Yeah, I am enjoying it actually, all the day. Each day by day, my, my heart is opening and opening, and I feel much better. I'm residing in a higher place. Thank you. Do you wish to ask anything? I have a question. Yes. What can you tell me about the element known as tracheon? Element. Oh, hi. We see just take on stick. It's another name for the idea called prime radian. It's everywhere, every time. It's a particle moving at infinite speed. It is what everything is created out of. It is you. Interesting. Do the Andromedans use this substance? <laughs> Andromedans are the substance as well as you are the substance. There is no other substance in the universe than the one that is all. I thought it was an actual element. Yes, and you were right. <laughs> so why is there a name for it if it's everything? Where is the where did the word tracheon come from? I don't understand this label. Me neither. Yeah. It uh, generated familiarity with me to the word tachyon, so that's what came out as the relevance for this moment. You said tachyon? Yes. I just want to make sure that you understood me. I said tracheon. I did, but okay. I didn't know what it means. And what is tachyon? Prime radiant. I One it. that is all. One particle that creates all, all other 
Tyler. Oh, it's Tachyon, it's Quark. It's one and the same. Yeah, I'm familiar with the prime radiant. Third to star. It's electron, it's photon. It's everything. It's one particle creating other particles or behaving as different particles. But it's one and the same nonetheless. Okay, I understand. If Thank I you. may, I have a I have a interjection. Um Tyler. Yes. Um, would you be able to give some clarity on the context of the the um, element that you are you are seeking? Sure. Yes. Um, tracheon is um, it's a word that came to me um, when I was meditating probably about a year ago, and I've been trying to figure out what it is the whole time. And um, uh, Tazer. Uh, told me that it was an element that had to do with uh, dimensional and space manipulation or time manipulation. And I, um, another connection with that is I saw a UFO several years ago, and that experience was described to me as an Andromedan ship that was manipulating <coughs> space and time and that's why I had the <clears throat> the visual they actually jumped into my they were actually jumping through space in front of me I guess so I just was seeing if maybe those two incidences are linked in some way do you feel like they are of course I guess I'm just trying to figure out the next step. The next stone to step on. The next step is step aside and follow your excitement. And this is why I'm Do here. not concentrate on the goal. There is no mission as such. There is just constant process, constant change. Enjoy the change and it will bring you more of what you want in proper order for you to receive it. Absolutely. Um, so I heard that Andromedans like to create technology and then pass them on to other civilizations for um, to make them better. Would you happen to know what the latest piece of technology the Andromedans have passed on to another civilization is? Um, where is I'm not the Google. <laughs> I'm not the encyclopedia. I make things simple and understandable. I'm not giving answers that lead you to separation. I see. It's not about the answer, it's about the experience of getting the answer. Yes. Because every question has the answer embedded in it. Uh, 
Thank you. Your energies are very gentle, very allowing. Say that again. Mm, you feel very soft. I'm very comfortable right now. Yeah. I don't feel very energetic today, though, but I'm definitely comfortable. Comfort is process of getting energy. Building okay. energy. Get comfortable. I've been trying to ground myself lately. Feel like I've been too head head high energy. Yes. Ground yourself and heighten yourself at the same time. That is the best way to stay. What you are already, you are all, you are both. You are the ground and you are the sky. Your energy is also very soothing and very comfortable. Just looking at us up and grounding us while you speak. Yeah. Is uh, Frankie's eyes open now? No. Closed, that's why I'm sending him messages. So, want to see his face, that's why. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for not insisting on knowing answers. For not insisting on knowing my labor. It's very important for him to integrate who he truly is. He is all. Would you be able to repeat that last part again? I miss and I didn't hear it. And she wants to give you thanks and gratitude for your allowance and for your wisdom as you don't insist on knowing. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Hello, experience. Hello. Uh, I, I mean, I don't want to insist anything, but I like to know how do you experience God? I am God. Everything is one. I am God itself, and you are God itself. You are me, and I am you. God as the Creator. Just want it to experience itself from different points of view, and you are one of those points of view, and you can be many when you open up to the possibility. 
you are many what you call yourself individual and that is separation do you find it hard to speak to us from a higher perspective not hard it's fun it always translates a little different it does not really matter because you are connected in many levels with me You, you receive to... your message that is enough. Do you have to change your perspective, though, at all? For what? For I talking. Change about... my perspective as well as everything that you perceive. Everything changes, everything switches, swaps from place to place, from time to time. We are all one, we are exchanging positions in space time. Where you were a moment before, there is now someone else, maybe in a dream. But still, it's real. Hello, experience. Oh. Sometimes I feel like uh, there is a game of hide and seek at play here. How, c how can you explain that to me? Yes, you are right. You hide from yourself to enjoy the process of seeking and finding. If you were able to manifest instantaneously it wouldn't be much fun for you at the moment because you would bring up your fears up very quickly very quickly and on manifesting it would cause you pain so you bring your fears up just when you are ready when it, it does not seem so painful to you Well, thank you, experience. Yeah. I am at the drone just for the record. You met the drone now? I am aspect of you. I am aspect of everything else. I am aspect of these stuff. I have many labels, many names. Wait. So actually, star, Isis, God, Goddess. Uh, okay, great. So you mean. You can channel other entities while I, you are channeling the first entity. Not coming yes, in and out. Are integration of many. Nice. We 
co-create this interaction with your higher selves, with your entities. Ah, it's the question play, is it's a harmony, it's orchestration. Okay, Metatron, I have a question now uh, regarding uh, energy. Once I was standing in the kitchen and I felt an energetic hug from my back and it strike me. So I thought, well, what would that be? A spirit, like some passed away, something like that. I wasn't sure if it is an angelic hug, spiritual hug from an entity that has passed away. What was it? What, where, how, why, those questions you want me to get are not me? important. What is important is your state of being, state of mind. Enjoy. Get excited. Be passionate about the process of discovering yourself in any way. Be satisfied with what you have. You don't need what you don't have. You always, always, always have exactly what you need. I am also here. I am cat aspect of um, there, 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 my consciousness is comfortable right now. You see, the energy is different. It's always slightly different than before. It's always changing, mixing, interconnecting. Yeah. All creation. I felt the, the vibration, the change of energy. It just changed. It was a flip in the air. Is uh, there's love in the air, you know? Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, I have a I have a question, or um, maybe it's something that um, I'm realizing now. I have a feeling that. Um, you are bringing by this integration of um, a vibration, uh, different vibration. Uh, you are bringing your or manif uh, new manifestation uh, into a channeling uh, skills, uh, whereas. Uh, you know, since uh, I've been li listening to other channelers, they they only bring one entity, um, uh, entity's information or channeling at a time. But what I what I'm experiencing today, um, it's the integration uh, and manifestation of uh, uh, um, different uh, aspects of. Um, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, different entities, uh, all, all uh, integrating vibrations, and yeah. and that's how I'm feeling right now. 
Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's where we are. Oh, heading into more and more connection. Into wow. deeper and deeper understanding of the co-creation. That's beautiful. I'm not I'm I'm in your boss. See that again? Are you back? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay, bring your face then. What is this? Are you back? <laughs> yes, I'm back punch, punchline, punchline. <laughs> That was awesome. No. Mm. I feel like sleeping. Ah, <laughs> uh, you had high energy. That's why. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna stop the recording? Drink some water. Yes, I will drink. Okay, then uh, you have, we have another channel, which is Mary. Go ahead, take the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you don't want to stop channeling. There he is. Oh, <laughs> 100%. Oh, how, can, how can we top that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Cannot stop it. We're in no. high vibe. No, no, her. Yeah. I feel that this this gives us a perfect time to to speak in a lower dimension. In a. Uh, I know. A, bring it, bring it back to. Ooh ha. The main kind of um, the feelings of what we we have felt from from yeah. the entity and through yeah what we feel that we can we can bring through. Mm. I feel that I feel that you still have a lot of doubt. A doubt regarding what? I only you know. I I just have a feeling that. Interesting. Doubting his channeling. I know he's channeling. If I want to see his face, it gives me uh, vibrations. It gives me soothing. You know, you get that. You have this effect on you. You know, that's why. But do you need your eyes to feel? Do you need your eyes to be no, able to no, no, no. sense the energy? No. But you need your eyes to to have the complete picture. I sense it, I felt it. How many times I told you I sense it? A vibration that has changed, things like that. But uh, the face gives you more how he presents himself, how he comes across, how he, he relaxes with himself. You know what I mean? But it's, the entity was experienced. Doesn't there matter. Was no, there, it's, was it's no, there was no need for, for viewing of it. It was more it, of. It doesn't matter. There, exactly. It doesn't. It doesn't. No, it doesn't matter whether it's in it's a, 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 a physical form or not. It's still, the we can see a sense of vibe uh, through his reflection. You know. Because all that you're going to see when you when you turn on the camera is the channeler, who is through yeah. the. You so, can sense him how he feels. You know. You know what I mean. You can sense him. Sense him by 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 hearing him. You can sense him by seeing him. See what I mean? I do know what you mean. Although see what I mean? I'm saying see what I mean. Like a sense of personality. You sense and you see. You sense both. You have all your senses to sense. See what I mean? Well, we we as humans are too busy stuck into what we see what we feel, what we taste. There's right, much right. more to it than just just these five senses that we we consider sure. to be the reality. I'm with you. I'm not against you. Uh, I'm not okay. saying that... I'm not trying to kind of yeah, yeah, raise I an agree. argument. I'm trying to... Um, yeah. well, not so much trying. It's more of a, a mis mm, misunderstanding of... Of your your perception of it. I give and you, I, I, and I, I wish to know more about your perception. My perception is an extra 
added value, an extra added value, that's all. See what I mean? See, I'm saying see what I mean all the time. <laughs> I hear what you mean. Uh, I feel what you mean. Great. And you don't see what I mean. <laughs> How can you see what you mean? It's impossible this is an expression in English. I'm not creating it. See? But by using your eyes, you cannot actually see a meaning. You give the meaning. Ah, uh, listen. Poetry, what do they draw? Something to give you a sense of feeling through your eyes, right? So this is it. This is why I'm trying to get the complete picture. He's okay. He's channeling an entity which is uh, not physical yet. I can sense him through my eyes, you know, because I draw myself. I'm a, I, I, I draw pictures, things like that. I use my hands a lot. So seeing artistic stuff is accomplishing the whole picture. What I mean? I'm saying see, you know. I don't know. What, I don't know what's the matter with me today, but I'm saying <laughs> word see all the time. Perhaps, perhaps this is actually something that we can we can look into. Hence the the word look. Um, we can we can venture into this because you you seem to you seem to want to um, bring this seeing into into the main focus. So I get your point. I get your point. But it seems that each person is different. Each individual is different than the other. Like some people, they sense, they feel. Like I, I, sense, I give you a sense of direction. I tell you after two traffic lights, traffic lights, there is le uh, turn to the left or right. I'm giving a sense of direction. Other people, they say no. Uh, uh, by by feeling the stuff, you know, drawn say it by vis visual, by sensing, by things like that. Each person is different than the other, you know. Well, I'm I'm on your I'm on your level. I I too have a a very strong um, what's the word? An unwillingness to let go of the the seeing as a main as a main. Um, sense. Where uh, I wear glasses as well, it creates even more focus on the need to see. Uh -huh. and so I, I do completely understand where you are coming from with that. And and I want to see beautiful things. You know, with your eyes, you want to see some beautiful things, you know. Channeling is a beautiful thing, but yet you want to see the beautiful thing. Like the entity crayon. I love him so much. But when they put him on, on, on YouTube, I see pictures, not his face. I'd love to see his face. His face is so oozing light, you know? I love that. But and I, it relaxes me when I see that. You know what I mean? I do. I do. So this is my point. Can, and I, I, sense can I place this point in? Okay. When the message comes through, you yeah. hear the message and you feel the message. You don't necessarily see the message right. unless it's written down in front of you. Right. For, an, for an entity such as Cryon, mm. it is it's very based within the message. Right. The, en the entity, the channeler, the they're not so much of importance as it's the message that is being brought through. True. True. Although, although with with uh, channelers such as as Daralanka with Bashar, is a very it's a very visual yeah. as well as auditory experience. Yeah. yeah. And I I find that people do connect more with the the being able to see and be able, yeah. able to interact with with you him got it. more. You got it. You got it. Slightly more personal level because you it's are true. face to face with them. Yeah. 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 But in a sense. We are all face to face right now, communicating on many multiple levels, many multiple dimensions, and we are we are probably seeing each other in a much clearer way in those levels than we are actually seeing each other through a webcam in this particular format. Right. Right. So for for now, I felt that the the entity that came through Frantischek. The the viewing of him was not as important as the, the, the that were that were portrayed. 
the first entity there was no big problem. The second, part, the second entity, Mr. Metatron, was important, you know, because they ooze light, they ooze it out, you know, and they let you love that. Okay? Yes, some some entities, I feel, would be more beneficial with the almost complete use of sense. Although, for the ones that are, are merely just a vibration, the sound and the, the feeling, in my perception, is more than enough. Yeah. I've got a question for you, Dan. That's Dan absolutely. speaking, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I just wanted to say, you know, I've seen a lot of videos with you, and I think you bring a, a really nice element to everything. Um, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, but here's a question for you. In your experiences, do you get a lot of, like, say, I don't know if you've ever had, like, a premonition or anything like that, but have you, how does, how do things come to you? Do they come visually? Do they come as thoughts or feelings or what? Because in my, in my case, I get a lot of visual, like, as in my third eye, visual. Yeah, um, throughout my my entire experience in this body I have I've been I'm going to say gifted because I've been given the sight the feelings the sound and also extrasensory perceptions of it I was always always had the feeling that I knew I didn't know what I knew but I just had the feeling that I knew something and it's yeah. always been that way. It's kind of um, let it, learning to trust that that knowledge is is true to myself. Right. But I've I get a lot of I get a lot of messages during dream states, during meditation states. I'm currently working on decalcifying my pineal gland again. Because I've let it, I've let it be a little bit out of use and be uh, polluted by uh, fluoride from water and food. And I wish to be able to see things as clearly as I did when I was in my younger years. But for yeah. now, I'm I I hear and a lot of feeling. I'm. I I believe that I'm empathic, although is that where you feel people's feelings? Most of the time, yes. There's um there are different different stages to to different um different empathy. There are many different stages for telepathy, uh, telepathics, and also different stages through channeling and through um viewing things with your third eye. And I feel that there are... See, this this is it. I, I feel a lot. So I, I most likely am empathic. Yeah, okay. Um, although I'm not going to say that I'm just empathic. Right, right. I'm, I'm getting that way quickly. Kind of like right. For everything, really. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people are. It's just hard to sort of, you know, we've got all these things happening and it's, it's hard to just pick one out and sort of, it's like it's all happening all at once, really. But what are you yeah. focusing on? It's just trusting that you have it all within you and it's going to, going to arrive whenever it arrives. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I have a question. Of course. Okay, when you say that you uh, dream a lot, uh, when you wake up in the morning, do you remember um, all your dreams or most of your dreams? More recently, yes. I've, after starting a dream journal, I noticed that a lot more of my dreams were becoming crystallized and a lot more clear. Although, using substances such as marijuana inhibited my dream recall. Uh -huh. So I've I've stopped using it, so I'm able to dream on a clearer level and be able to see the 
see the messages within the dream without the the change in perception that the the different substances give you. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Okay. Um, I um, like let's say if I can explain this. Let's say like I uh, see a video um, on YouTube uh, about um, channeling. Let's say channeling or something else that is related to a metaphysical subject. Um, I, I can swear that this is the first time I am watching this video. This is like for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes video on YouTube. Uh, but in my subconscious, um, I know I, I know this, or I I've seen this before, or or I know something about this video. I mean I I don't know if I if I mean I've seen it before. I've watched it before. I know the the material, the things that they're talking about. Uh, but uh, I mean it's hard to explain. Uh, it's like a deja deja vu, deja vu, something like that to me. Yes. And this is not just one video or this is not just one incident. So many so many times you know it's like a deja vu uh, I feel like oh I know this. I know that. Uh it's just so strange to me. I mean I don't know how to explain it. Um I I just got a an image of an analogy um that may put it into a slightly different perspective. Right. Um, Go ahead. Being a musical, uh, well, being very musical anyway, I, I've noticed that if I don't practice the instrument for, say, I, I didn't play guitar for a year, I never truly forget how to play. It just becomes rusty. So by practicing and by recalling the information in the way that you're viewing the video, you're allowing yourself to remember something that you haven't necessarily forgotten but it's been pushed into the back into your subconscious and you're allowing your conscious to be able to bring it to the foreground again. Mm -hmm. Right. That's an so awesome it's, been like door, it's been like dormanted um, uh, for yeah. me. Yeah. Okay, so now now is the time that you know I'm I'm allowing it to come uh, into my reality at this time. You're just giving yourself the the tool to unlock that little the little key that's been hiding behind it to be able to bring it back to focus. I to see. be able to I'm I'm gonna stop saying forget because mm -hmm. I. I don't believe that we truly do forget anything. Um, we can right. we can stop remembering it, but we right. never truly forget it. The image of a treasure box come to come to mind. That it's a treasure box. I have it, uh, and now I am opening, you know, unlocking it, and uh, you know looking inside and see what's in there and bring in bring the items one by one absolutely yeah yeah i hope i hope that the the analogy helped you in some way yeah yes 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 cuz i was wondering about that what is going on with me <laughs> no, i i too have i've found a, that i've been like, doing a video and i I can almost say what is going to happen next. I oh can, wow! I can pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Almost yeah. like I I I called it guessing before, but yeah. now it's I it's not guessing. Know yeah. What's coming next? Right. That's empathic, right. empathic uh, Dan. Pardon? Knowing what's coming, uh, empathic when you know what's coming next, it's empathic, isn't it? Possibly, I'm. 
I'm not not too sure. Or knowing. There's another word for it, knowing. I have that too. So, who's the next channeler? Now we have um, two more. We have Sabrina and Mary. Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say welcome to Sabrina. Welcome to wow. the welcome to the love zone. Hello, Sabrina. Hello, Sabrina. Welcome. How we're are you guys? For, we're waiting for your channeling, and Dan also. Dan's supposed to channel today. Oh, Dan is gonna channel. Yeah, me. All right. Got, Dan. You know he's got all these different vibrations. <laughs> so he needs. <laughs> He needs to bring it up. <laughs> How do you know that they don't come through anyway? Just at different times. Well, I can, I can, I, I can, tell. I can tell when you are. Yeah, we can, we can feel the energy. Yeah, I can tell when it's, when it's Dan fully connected and when it's Dan partly connected. <laughs> Sleepy Dan. Ooh, hi guys, come on, say something. Dan, so, uh, have you noticed that um, yesterday when you were channeling and um, your voice, it didn't change completely, but um, I could tell uh, the difference. You, you were channeled talking. Yesterday? Yeah, he was talking uh, kind of like um, uh, slow, but um, with uh, so much of um, uh, authority and clearness, you know, clear. He was so clear uh, on the words, uh, the way he was talking, and I really enjoyed it. It was really nice. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, because at that point he's he's channeling in a different way. It's it's Dan, but he's just accessing the information, and it's just coming through. The through him. Yeah. Well, um, there was, the information. No entity is giving it to him. Uh, there mm -hmm. was there was part part um part Liren that came through. Atakir made a, a little bit of a um, Yeah. And I noticed that yes. kind of didn't really um, properly kind of come through, so there was no need for a, an introduction or or any kind of Overall um, channeling experience. It was more of a. I I linked into some kind of aspect of my higher self. Right. I was gonna say came, that. Yes. Came yes. in and have, sort of have you channeled a few things? Have you channeled anybody else's entities, or have they come to you? Um, I've been. I'm. I'm still. I'm still reluctant to give up control. That's that's the one that I'm I'm currently currently working on because I I do wish to to introduce uh, a few of my my higher friends to to people. I'm just um, I'm very reluctant to give up my my mind's uh, control center at the minute. Okay. It's it's a hard to it's hard to explain because it kind of it's as if the entity kind of flies into me, says a few things, and then just dashes out. Mhm. Mm I love that. that. That would be the be that would be the best description of it, actually. But then, Dan, you're still here. You're not going anywhere. You're a conscious channeler. You're not, by you saying, uh, I'm, I'm afraid to give up uh, com mm, complete control, you are not, you're not, you are not a uh, trans channeler. You well, the are funniest part about it is, um, is I know that these entities that are speaking through me are myself. I know that they are, they are aspects of me. So I, I'm not sure why why I'm 
still reluctant to to relinquish control of of everything, but it's you know it's, it's a new experience. That's why. Weird. Yeah, I think I'm just I'm paddling around in the waters at the minute and just getting myself comfortable. Uh huh. Good. That's good. Because this this is extremely new to me. I've not really known about channeling to the extent that I do now for for probably more than more than a couple of months. Yeah, that'd be wonderful, yeah. So I'm I'm still very new. Like I didn't hear I didn't even know who who or what a Bashar was until I came to the human colonies. So it's it's um it's, this is all very, very new to me. But somehow it's always been there, kind of like um, almost like a, a multiple personality mm -hmm. able to kind of tap into different aspects of of perception without really any effort. Yeah, I was gonna say that it's it's always for me the same thing with me. I feel like it's always been. Uh, part of me, um, but now I am allowing it, and I tap. I'm tapping into this new reality in my life um, by allowing a new vibration of my higher self um, uh, interacting with me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I completely understand what you're saying. I feel like the the entities that that show themselves through me are they are kind of hidden aspects of of myself that I've pushed into the background that I've um, not necessarily forgotten about. As I was saying, it's um, I just kind of put a bit of a mirror, like a a one-sided mirror, in front of them, and I just need to turn that into a, a glass window and then when it's when it's uh, comfortable with the glass window take out the window completely right expand expand because yeah. mm. that's that's all I I wish to do since mm. I since I was given this body I was um, I've always been searching not knowing what I'm searching for I've just been searching mm -hmm. kind of like a like a spiritual treasure hunter. Wow, nice. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> totally agree. <laughs> I, 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 have, I believe that's what we've we've all been doing, and that's yeah. why we're we're now here because we've we've been searching for long enough to be able to find other people that are also searching for similar things. And we're now co-creating Treasure Island, mm. which is going to be the, uh, in my opinion, it's going to be really, really awesome experience. Yeah, yeah. It the the <clears throat> the interesting thing is knowing. <clears throat> when you are allowing and when you are pushing aside. Yeah. That's a fine line there. And you have to keep checking with yourself. Um if if you're just pushing aside or if you just if you're allowing it to just flow on its own as since you know your own pace. But um, that's where I find myself, you know, right, right now. Am I pushing aside or am I just allowing it to happen when it wants to happen? So <clears throat> that's a bit difficult sometimes to, to discern. Yeah, I've been, I've been living, living using my mind for, for so many years. That it's kind of, it's difficult to just allow things to be. It's getting easier, a lot easier. So I'm 
I've been noticing that the more I do allow, the more that comes. And when when I do push things aside, it tends to creep back up on me and then kind of sweep me out from underneath my feet and I have to try and catch up with myself again. Right. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I, I never, never truly never truly get rid of it. It just comes back a little bit stronger and says, nah, you're not forgetting about me. Yeah, yeah, because you're just pushing something down, you know, trying to hold it underwater, and it's just going to push back up. You can only hold it down for so long. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have something funny for you guys to make you laugh a little. Awesome. <laughs> um, so I have to go to a jury duty over here in the States. You know, you have to go. Um, and I was reading the questionnaire, and one of the questions, they ask you, like, what TV shows you watch, um, um, you know, what your kids uh, do for a living, anybody that's around you. Um, and they also ask what you do in your spare time. So I decided that perhaps if I tell them <laughs> I talk to ETs, I channel ETs in my spare time. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to do it in a straight face. Did, but did, you, did you say that intentionally so you avoid jury duty? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just think I, I would get a kick out of that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Imagine the reactions on everyone else's face as well. Exactly. <laughs> I think you should. That'd be funny. That would be very funny. I, I'm not lying. I won't be lying. And you never know what you might, you know, who you might connect with. What state are you in, Sabrina? Uh, New Jersey. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I'm thinking, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can even speak to you in ET language if you like. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a um, that'd be a strange courtroom, wouldn't it? Standing up and speaking up for you. <laughs> uh, Sabrina, I think. Uh, Another way to look at it is going to be a very short uh, session because um, you're going to you're going to know who did it. <laughs> oh my god! Actually, yeah, tap into wouldn't that be yeah. that fringe on the um, the, the unbiased. Um, yeah. Aspect of being a juror, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yes. You gotta be. Outcome. You gotta be jury number one. <laughs> <laughs> that gets kicked out. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I've been planning in my warped little mind. <laughs> Go oh, into court God. and <laughs> saying that you channel ETs and that you speak ET languages. That takes some serious balls as well, Sabrina. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm not be lying. And yeah. he might think, oh, do not make a mockery of this court. I said, I am not making a mockery. <laughs> <laughs> That's my spare time. You want it? I'm telling you what I do in my spare time. Oh god! Oh god! Oh, god. I told you guys would laugh. Oh god! 
<laughs> oh. it's, like that would say brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, they, they, I'm not, anyway. <laughs> it's just, it, I just have this running images in my head, you know, because I have a very, I'm very visual with my, I guess the third eye, if you want to call it that. Mm. Um, so I just see all these, like a video running in my head <laughs> of their answers and me telling them this stuff. And mm. They'll say, you're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> oh. I'm thinking hopefully they won't want to call a psychiatric ward <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> that's my fear <laughs> oh. <laughs> we need a straight jacket over here <laughs> Oh god. Oh. Anyways, well, that was my joke. If you if you ever got into that situation, you could just um you could just channel Houdini and you can get out of the straitjacket. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the the look on their face after you're just there like bang done. Yep. <laughs> What's the, the next trick? Houdini's not showing up. <laughs> 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 we go, I go, I got angels showing up, I got <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> but now Houdini. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. oh, That's God. nice. Yeah. Did you guys see the um, the webinar from this morning? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't in it, but I watched it at the same time. I was kind of like behind the scene because I wanted to allow some uh, new people to come in, come in. Mm -hmm. So I was yeah, I was listening at the same time. Okay. It was nice. Yeah. It was interesting. What what they were saying about us uh taking on some of the traits of the ET without having their DNA. Uh -huh. without, without having your DNA on without any more. No, without having. Like we were just from contact with them. My That's son is well, it's, it's contradict Patty's own opinion or what we're not. <laughs> 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 he was sitting with me. So. Yeah, your son has your your son has a strong connection. Uh, to Arcturian? Um, well, they said he has Arcturian, but but he has Pleiadian because of from me. Oh. Yeah. So he is actually very strong on him. It's stronger on him than it is on me. The mm -hmm. trades. To a certain extent, I don't know, because the way. How did they, ex what did they say that the trades of Pleiadian? Grow like four foot taller. Blonde, long blonde hair. Yeah, no, but, but like character wise. Because um, I know they say they're compassionate and... Don't um, they use more uh, sound? Uh, manifest um, uh, by using sound, uh, sound and vibration, uh, they uh, materialize, uh, or how do I say it? Manifest, you know, do mm, manifest into uh, like if you if they want to create something, they use more sound and light. I don't know if that's I, 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 I want to say Pleiadians. But when I channeled a Pleiadian, it, it uh, came through my heart, and it was uh, almost like it was like a hurricane coming out of my chest. It was like 
it was like the it's like she pushed the air out of my I don't know how to explain it exactly. It's like a hurricane was in my my chest and it came out in a language. Oh. But it was through her, it was through my heart though. So did did it talk in English? Yeah, it was uh, it was a dream state channel. I I uh, I'm gonna go get my binder. It's got her name in it, um, in a minute. But um, yeah, she talked in English to me. Well, in the dream, she was actually talking to someone else through me. But I think that the message was intended for me. Well, the message was intended for me. I love I love the dream state channelings. I I can't wait to um to bring my dream state channeling into reality because I channeled Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Ah. It's, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> For real. How did that yeah, feel? It was such a such a weird dream. I I wasn't even thinking about Lord of the Rings. I I think the last thing I watched before going to bed. Actually, the last things I've been watching before going to bed has been like Pokemon and things like that, and like. I've had some crazy dreams that have nothing to do with Pokemon, nothing to do with like cartoons in general, and they've always ended up being some of the the best learning experiences I've had. So I love Pokemon, but yeah, I've I've seen a um a dark elf came through um, during a dream state. Artemis, the the Greek goddess of the hunt, came through. Um, in the dream state and Gollum, and it was, it was weird. So does last, last, Gollum... last night I was a, I was actually a helicopter. Like there was somebody inside driving, but I was the helicopter. Oh wow, that's and, cool. Uh, it's um, it's strange, very strange. That is weird. Yeah, I love dreams. Dreams but are. Gollum, Gollum's just a fictional character. I mean, I I don't know about that. Right. <laughs> well, like, does he have life because we've given him life? Or? Well, when we when we create, we we manifest it into a reality of some form. So, in some ways, even even the the smallest characters within books who are given shape in some form have been created into a reality. Like on multiple levels? I I believe so, yeah. Oh yeah, um, probably. But I've I've also through speaking to people, there is um there's been a lot of talk of the the Middle Earth um well the whole story of Middle Earth actually being a little bit more real than it's made out to be because we we perceive it as just a book, but Tolkien must have must have gone somewhere to create that that depth of imagery. That's what I think. I mean, I, I read a book like even the series Merlin. You know, I read something like that, and I think, you know, this is this had to happen. Like, this is just such an awesome story that I don't know. It's, it's well. I mean, basically everything does exist, you know. Like Bashar says, anything you can think of. Yep. As soon as you, as soon as you think, it becomes, becomes creation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. But um, one thing I've just that's just made me think. Um, what you said, Mary, about the, the beings creating using sound. I've noticed that if I think of something, there's a possibility that is well, there's a probability that it's going to become real. But well, not no buts. When I I speak that uh, that thought out, as well as think it, it becomes even realer, quicker, and it actually allows it to be created in a kind of almost instantaneous. Because mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I've noticed that I've, I've, I'll say it's going to rain today and then later on it rains. If I think about it there's a possibility that there will be slight rain or there will be a chance of rain 
But when I, when I say, yeah, it's definitely going to rain, it, most of the time it happens. And I, I found that to be a little bit more than coincidence lately. Because it's been it's been so spot on. I've been able to kind of just judge it and go, yep, this is going to happen. And it happens. Almost as if I've created it. Yeah, uh -huh. it's a, it's um it's happening in your reality. It's happening. It's happening. Um, you align it. Yeah, you al align it to happen. And come yeah. to so in, come to in some your way, reality. In some ways, um, I think many many beings or many races uh, throughout the universe use sound in a similar way. Um. Where most of the beings in the higher dimensions are telepathic, they only use words for specific reasons, which could be for creation. Because they would they would have conversations through telepathy instead of having a conversation as, as we are now. Uh, which is more powerful, telepathy. I think, I think, I think, I think everything is is as important and as powerful as each other. We just we need to remember, uh, not remember. Stop! I need to stop saying like forget and remember. Really, um, we we've chosen to use words for so long that they've they've lost the the power of creation so much. And as we, we start to tap back into our connection with source and with creation, it's becoming almost like words are not needed so much for conversations. They're, they're used for higher purposes. Um. <laughs> um. The, the thing with telepathy is that they are able to give you more informational more information in a different way um, and I'm getting uh, it's they're sort of showing me right now what they mean um, it's kind of hard to put it it's, it's sort of like adding another dimension to information that's the best way I can put it so so you understand it and get more in a different way and they can give you more and you understand it all you know with words it's very limited to what can we give um, you know because you can only speak so fast but when it's done telepathically, I can give you, you know, a whole website. In a fraction of a second, in yeah. In a fraction of a second, uh, give you all of it, and you can understand all of it in that second. So, or you say, oh, okay. So that's really, so it allows for less discrepancy because when you are speaking with words, inflections matter just as much as the words. So if your inflection is different, especially when we are from different countries, um, it can be read different, and it can, it can be interpreted different, and me take it as an offense, um, as opposed to when it's done telepathically, uh, it also involves the heart and and other things in there, so there's less room for a mistake or for misinterpretation, not mistake, but misinterpretation of things being said. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Um, yeah. I was gonna say that uh, it seems to me uh, that tele when when we when we um, talk um, telepathically. Uh, or interact uh, telepathically to each other, uh, there is a clear uh, connection uh, in here. 
uh, whereas uh, talking in words, um, it's um, you know it's not as clear connection. Um, this is what I'm getting at. Right, right. Because in, go ahead. I was just asking: Are y'all intending on c uh, connecting telepathically, or are you just talking more about it's just synchronicity? Um, same thing. I would say I would say both is happening. Yeah. So quite it's an few, quite a few of us are are making it more of a um, a daily routine to send out and receive telepathic messages and to practice it in the way that we would practice anything and we're we're kind of we're testing ourselves we're going um, are they getting this message are they am I really sending it out and it's actually really surprising how how consistent and how many of of the messages are actually coming through as clear as day yeah yeah, no, and the other thing that I noticed, like I was talking to Dan one day and I knew what he was going to say. Uh, and I was talking to, to Jaguar the next day and I knew, you know, so it, <clears throat> so it was almost like we were sending each other the, the thoughts that we were thinking. So they were hap that was happening before the words were coming out. I gotcha. Yeah, okay. So, that sounds familiar. and then, the, yeah. Yeah, because, cause, I mean, I, I, I've done that. You know, you do that normally, people that are very close to you. Um, yeah. But I'm finding with, with certain people, the channels are getting open. Well, too, it's like if someone's that's you know not exactly on your level, you're talking to them, or my, in my case, I talk to them, and it, I know it, I know it as I'm saying it that it's not being processed the same way. You know, it's like it's like I know this is not getting through to you as it's coming out of my mouth. Yeah, uh, I think I if if you an intention before you start speaking to the person. Um, it, it, it can probably register better because you're talking to them at a different level beforehand. Yeah. So if, if you're going somewhere and meeting with somebody and you know that this might be a little bit rocky, um, if you said the intention, you know, beforehand that uh, what you want from that, um, you will find that that it gets easier and and more of it gets true. That's through. a good tip. Yeah, like this is the intention of this conversation. I'm trying to get you to understand X, Y, and Z. And then, yeah, I got you. Yeah, and they'll understand to whatever level they are at also, so you have to allow for that. Yeah. And that's okay also. Well, I'm finding it's just becoming increasingly difficult to talk to many people, and I'm sure as y'all already know, and it seems mm -hmm. like I'm just gravitating away from them, really. It's just they're all just leaving my <laughs> life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can relate to them up to a certain level, but uh, yes, I understand what you mean. Hey, did anyone happen to see that Bashar video that got taken off? Yes. I didn't see that. By the time I was going to see it, it said that it's, it's taken off. it was taken off. Yeah, I didn't see it either. But um, the a link was placed under that on their comments. He got replaced in the Chinese website. Uh, oh, it, really? 
loads very, very slow. So just let the uh, the put on the video. I mean, it's loaded and just let it finish loading. Otherwise, because it loads very slow. Do you have the link to that by any chance? Mm, no, I'm on my phone, so you can find it. Oh, I gotcha. Um, but it, in that same page, that same page, it's it's there. Oh, okay, on YouTube. On uh, no, on um, on Human Colony. Oh, okay. Okay. Should be able to find it there. So, so, so the uh, the Pleiadian I channeled. Her name is Centrinky. Oh, Centrinky. Does that sound familiar? Centrinky. Yeah. Centrinky. Mine, mine is Lalia. Is that Pleiadian? Your Pleiadian? Yes. She's, she's part of my oversoul. Uh, she's in the seventh dimension, I think it was. How did you go about connecting with her in your own experience? Oh, no. I, I, I know she's there. I haven't been able to talk to her. For some reason, I don't, I, I don't seem to be able to connect to my play, <laughs> which I find odd. Like I feel more connected to the Arcturians and the Lyrans. Do you feel that connection, like let's just say to the Arcturians, do you feel that connection physically? Or how do you feel it physically? Um, they're like always present. Yeah, yeah. They're like always present and the language always comes out whenever I'm doing something. And You're watching the world come. And, and uh, like I was outside taking pictures of my flowers, and then it just comes out. And, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so so it's like present in that in that way, and even for channeling, they seem to be the easiest for me to channel for them to come through and. But the Pleiadian side, I don't, I don't know. And actually, I was thinking when I was talking to you guys about my son, I was thinking I should ask them what traits of his are Pleiadian, because I'm intrigued by it. Because the, the way he is, like he doesn't have like the ups and downs that we humans have. He doesn't have any of. Is like on, I don't want to say flat line, but you know he might do a little wiggle on the line and is and it just, is it like he kind of observes things happening rather than immediately reacting to them? He doesn't react. Huh. Yeah. 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 You you don't get like those reactions, I. Uh, he he laughs a little bit louder now, but even before and and even when when he's had to do something um, at times where I didn't feel well and things were really wrong, he did he doesn't like go into panic or anything. He would just look at me and say, "Mom, why did you go and and manifest stuff for yourself?" <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's cool. That's I mean, that's almost like you're describing me. That's interesting. Yeah, and because I'm trying to figure out, you know, sort of what where my connections are. Oh. I'm still Do in that. In you, ma'am. Do you have Pleiadian? I don't know, actually. I know that um, this. Uh, Pleiadian Centriki came through me in a dream state, and that's um, that's like the most recent thing that happened. And took her was the one who told me that it was uh, Pleiadian. So, 
But I definitely <laughs> felt her like the day before, like because I had her, I had that experience in a dream state. But I saw her, uh, and through my third eye, I saw her before I went to sleep, and I felt her. So. Oh. I saw her face. Yeah, I, I'm probably not connecting because I don't think I can connect. It's my own doing. So, but but I I would be really because I I want to know how much I'm trying to see what the Pleiadians are are like because I know they said they're compassionate and and very caring. From what James, no, it wasn't James. Who was it that was saying that? Um, the other, the other person that is in the colony. Dan, do you remember? Douglas. 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 That's it. Douglas. Douglas. Yeah. That they ask them more like personal questions when they're working with people. <clears throat> oh, he did. I remember that one. Yeah. 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 So, so they can con they connect more in that sense. But then I'm thinking. Oh my God! <laughs> because uh, I guess I must. I'm thinking maybe I don't have any Pleiadian traits. <laughs> I just had to work for it. <laughs> but it's interesting. It's interesting about the the difference. Dan, did, did they finish giving you the uh, DNA? Finish giving me DNA? I didn't even ask for any. Oh, you didn't ask for any. No. Oh, okay. Um, since since I came here, I I I I couldn't see what the big fuss about the uh, the hybridization was because I've I've always been not not a hundred percent human. <laughs> um, not necessarily saying that I'm I'm not human. I know that I, I I was born human. That I I was raised by human family, but I've always felt that I've not needed to kind of worry about changing anything about it because I've got everything that I need. Yeah, I didn't ask for it either. Although I did have a. Um, a mantis being um, doing some kind of work on on one of my legs. Okay. And I had a another being. Um, I was told that there were two Pleiadians that were doing some work on my arm, but they could be implants or they could just be something that was going wrong. I I have no idea, but right, they were, right. They were definitely definitely doing something to me that I didn't necessarily ask for consciously, but they uh, they were doing it anyway. Yeah, I'm a hybrid, but not by choice. But I've always I've always known that I've got connections to reptilian and to. Well, many, uh, many beings. Um, hmm. But the, the most strong ones are Reptilian, Lyran. I've always had this feeling of Pleiadian, but I'm, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting to meet a Pleiadian. Yeah, me too. You know what I find interesting, though, that because they said that there is an assigned Pleiadian to me, right? Because of whoever did the implant. Yeah. Gave me the DNA. But I never felt them and I I don't feel like like a connection somewhere else, even though they say connected to the Federation of Light. Because 
because Gert Frenier didn't give me all the languages. But I don't I don't feel that connection. I haven't like I feel to towards Gert Frenier. Hey, has anyone else here been to the third colony? Which colony? The third. Um, you mean uh, the Gurk Fitnir number three? Yes. Um, not that I'm consciously aware of, although Atakir probably has. Why do they do the third colony? Well... Um, Third one is the the one that supposedly they're they're making the the movies and the interviews. Uh, okay. Well, Tazer told me that I went to the third one, and he said it was because it was for my diplomacy. It was for I don't know training to be a diplomat or something like that. Okay. That's why I was asking. <clears throat> Yeah, I've been to all of them. Um, uh, I can't hear you, Sabrina. I've been to all of them, but I really don't know why. I've been to um, Second Colony. Um, the car told me that I've been to the second colony, colony number two, uh, two or three times. But I don't remember. I mean, I probably, you know, gone in, in my sleep state, but yeah. I don't remember. What did he say it was for, for at number two? Number two, um... I think he said uh, it's a they have educational program uh, to learn. Dan, is that where you did the uh, the whole plant dying thing? Um, that... I'm not actually sure which one which one it was. It because um, I've been to both the Gurkfitnir and the Erin colonies now. Um, oh, so there's but... Erin. As well. Yeah, the the Erin colonies is a an Erin run is a Pleiadian Erin colony um, run by Ken, King Kenjin or Coral Kenjin, who um, basically they're like a mirror of the Gurkfit near ones, but with different purposes. I see. Um, I believe that the Gurkfit near Colony one is either for telepathy or for the um, the introduction of the hybridization, and then number two is either the the telepathy or the um, the education of hybrid children and the education of hybrids in general, and then the third one is the education of the humanity by the hybrids. Hmm. Which would be the the making of the interviews and the videos and the the allowing the humanity to see what's going on. Um, and that actually will make sense for Tyler because don't you do videos? Uh yeah yeah I'm 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 definitely like a tech technology. Uh, I like technology. Actually, I like more thinking about future technology than what we have now. Right, so that I will, like that I will, like doing that too. Yeah, that will make sense. It's funny. It's almost like all of my best friends who we've all kind of gone through this whole uh, discovering all of this stuff at once. Um, it's like everything is happening. It's like the synchronicity is telling me, you know, we're all gonna make some technology here. It's like it's just it's just crazy the synchronicity. It's like my one of my good friends is, is uh he's going to school for like electrical engineering or whatever you know and it's like wow you know like he wasn't even gonna go to college a few months ago or I mean uh, you know when he first started. Okay. 
Oh, yeah. Yep. Did he get caught off? Now, who's who's the one that has the live cam? I don't want to click on anybody because it tends to view people. That's, um, that's that's Jacob. He's currently watching the World Cup. Oh, but, but that yeah. finished. Oh, I'm, I'm here. Okay, then he may may still be here. You may be here again then. Yeah. Jacob, are you are you here? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Awesome. Yes. Hello. Oh. Hi, Jacob. Hi. <laughs> Um, oh, can you give me? Jacob walked away. He is checking on something. Interesting chair. <laughs> Anyways, um. About the uh, the colonies, so so what is supposed to be going on on the um, the era colonies? Um, from what I gathered, in Colony One, there is like a kind of well, first thing first, the colonies are living. So they can they can change into whatever the colony wishes for it to be. Colony one is a a living arena, which is used for energetic training combat to help us learn to work together and to help us understand our our skills that we have. Um, it started off by some of us getting put into teams and things like that, just to kind of bring a bit of fun into the to the situation, because mm -hmm. there were a lot of um, a lot of people that were holding certain fears and different things within our shadow self. So we had to overcome these these different things within a higher dimensional kind of combat perspective. Although the the arena itself transforms into many different things, some days it would be like a um, looking like an open field, sometimes it will look like ruins. It depends what the colony itself at the time wishes to make it more fun. Um, it can also change into kind of like a stadium where there'll be music performances, dancing, um, singing, all kinds of fun things happening in the first colony. Um, I believe that people are from the last time that Kenjin came through, he was saying that people were moving into the second colony. Although I'm not I'm not very sure about what the second colony actually is. And I have no no clue about the third colony yet. Although perhaps if if Kenjin was to come through Jim again soon we may be able to find out a little bit more about that. Um, I could, yeah. I could possibly, when I, when I next um, kind of check in with Atak here, because I've, I've kind of let let him do his own thing for the minute, because he's he's quite busy. Um, I could maybe find out. A little bit of information about it. Certain things he can't tell me because need to know basis and things like that. It's the way that most of the ETs are, especially the Lyrans. They they like to tell you things that you you need to know, and keep the things that are gonna just cloud cloud everything up. They they keep them a little bit kind of hushed up because. Quite frankly, we've got, we've got enough to be dealing with on our, our own planet than worrying about certain things in the uh, 
in the space dimensions. Yeah, but because I feel I feel that Kenjin would probably be the best one to uh, speak to about that. Right. So maybe if we made an intention for Kenjin to come through Jim, that would be that'd be awesome to find out a little bit more about what is happening on the other colonies. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Especially seeing as um, Nick is currently he's he's doing his own thing. He's he's staying staying out of the way because he's he's got enough on his plate at the minute. So um, bringing bringing Kenjin through him would probably be it's it's probably not going to be helpful for his his progression at the moment. And seeing as Jim Jim is another person who Kenjin has come through. It seems like the um, the best option for now. Yes, yeah. that sounds good. But I've tried to um, I've tried to keep keep the the talk of different colonies out of the way for them for now, because I found out that there are. Uh, more than just the Gurk Fitnir and more than just the Erin colonies, but bringing them into the the picture is probably just going to cause a lot more clouding of what's actually going on. Because we we've got to try and we're 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 learning to work together. We're learning to co-create and co-creating so many different colonies is probably going to be. A little bit confusing for for a lot of people. So staying so, staying for just the gut fit near ones and the Aaron colonies for now is a uh, probably the wisest option as well. So you think we're going to do more than those? There there are definitely definitely more than those. Um, from what I've been told, quite a few of them are not ready to open up to humans yet. Some some are being some of the planets are being visited by humans to get them used to um, the idea of humans and to get the colonies set up ready for them when the humanity is ready to bring them into their reality and this is um, it's also the same with a load of races of beings who are traveling towards Earth to awaken their hybrids. And to also awaken the DNA within people, mm -hmm. which is why a lot of the the different types of beings haven't haven't really shown themselves yet. Because I've I've got some beings that are well, I've never even heard of them before. Uh, Roxy helped me out a little bit because there's a there's a planet called Kiru which is occupied mainly by Syrians and they they seem to want to be in contact with me in the future and there's also a either a race of beings or a an alliance of people called Khan which are also traveling towards Earth I I'm very out of the loop of, of who Khan are. All I know is that a being appeared behind me and said, Khan, and that's all I got. Um, it was it was quite it was weird. It was one of the first um, first times I've heard an extra sort of outside of myself say in their own voice. And there's also a uh, a group of either the predecessors to Liren or a group of Liren that created another group of Liren called SARS who are either associated with my Liren friend Atakir or are going to be introducing their self soon. But um, it, it starts to get it starts to get confusing. Because I've, I've 
I've been given like loads of different beings that come through and then they they just sort of they go here we are now we're going to go off and do our own thing you're not going to hear for us for ages and and who gave you this information um well sars was given to me in a dream i was trying to well i was learning about spirit guides and then a dragon appeared and just said sars so I was like, okay, I've got a dragon spirit guide called Sars. Turns out that Sars was actually a name of a race, and the dragon was helping me to kind of learn about them, to give me the step forward. The, the Kiru came through as just a word that um, came into my mind, and it just said Kiru. I was like, okay, I'll write this down, yeah, dive into it. And I was speaking to Roxy, and she said that there are these three beings that are traveling to Earth, or these three races of beings that are traveling to Earth at the moment, but they're, they're staying a little bit kind of, a little bit shrouded because they, they're also nervous of us as we're nervous of them. So they're they're kind of they're testing the waters of the humanity to see how we cope with the beings that we're given, the beings that are coming to us now. Right. Yes. <laughs> you you guys go first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the, the older I think the newer the newer race of Liren are coming in and kind of they're saying hi and then the older ones they're, they're going, right, children, go and go and play with the humans. We'll be in in, in whenever we come. <laughs> you you guys be the guinea pigs. <laughs> Let's see how they react to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I I I know that and and I'm feeling more and more the connection to, you know, I, I probably met with a lot of these, a lot of um, ET races. Um, I'm feeling that connection more and more. Um, I didn't hear that. Sorry, your your mic keeps breaking up. Oh, that I, I said. I said I think I'm integrating more that that aspect of me of of the uh, I guess the council. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I'm still I'm still not sure of my my particular part I play in it, but I know that I. I've I've had a seat there for for a little while. I'm not sure what I'm doing there or who I speak to or why I'm there. But which, I kind of one? I kind of think I, I kind of feel like I know why I'm there. But it's it's still a little bit kind of wavy at the minute. Um a little bit clouded. On on which council are you talking about? I have no idea. Some some big kind of some really really old major players in creation. Okay. That's all. That's all that I I've been given really. And and that's probably where our other connection is. Yeah, most likely. I according to what I've been kind of given and what I feel I've been around a very long time and um, things that Roxy and Caitlin have have said have they've backed it up they've um, they've been given downloads from entities like Caitlin was given a download about one of my my past selves called the plant King Mm -hmm. 
And uh, yeah, apparently I'm I've been around a, a very long time since uh, oh. since the time of shadow, where there okay. was where there was no light. But wouldn't that hold true or of most? Since absolutely. everything absolutely absolutely yeah yeah well we are we are all of of oversoul which would have been through to the point where source created the darkness and the light so we would have been at least most of us would have been we would have been in blackness for for quite a while but i've also been been given information about existences outside of this universe within other times within other ideas of thought yeah speaking of that i had i had gone into a website uh, where the woman got information from a civilization from an other universe so and the way they do it is they have they divided the universe the not the universe I don't know what would encompass all the universes um, but they I divided into quadrants, into quadrants they divided it and then they said we are in quadrant I, I, I don't know if it was two um, so they they told her that and then they proceeded to talk about themselves but that was only a one-time thing and she hasn't had any more information which okay. to me was very intriguing um, to, to talk to somebody from a different universe yeah I I found I found it fascinating when I started finding about um, different different aspects of myself that are outside of this universe as well. I have one life um, inside and outside this universe and I think it's actually a, a common a common thing for my for my um, my soul fragment to be kind of like a a space pirate mm -hmm. and um, I just tend to travel all around um, in some some universes, I am kind of like a trader of light and information, uh, benefiting the the evolution of different planets, benefiting the ascension of different planets. Um, others, I you know, some of them not not so nice, but you know, we've all got we've all got lives where we're not we wouldn't be the nicest people. But we're playing our part that has to be played within that particular time frame, and um, the most uh, the most closest one is actually a. I believe she's an elf, some some kind of wood elf, but she travels between different planets, kind of like Atakir, but is like a a trader. Okay. Trading between um, trading resources, trading well anything really. Yeah. But doing it for import export. <laughs> kind of, kind of, yeah. Galactic import export. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's awesome because um, she's she's kind of like who she may even work with Atak here. And uh, that would actually that resonates quite funny because it's um, I've always seen it more like a kind of a Han Solo from Star Wars. So if mm -hmm. there's if there's the elf as Han Solo, and then the Liren as well, it's kind of <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> ah. Now, when you talk Almost about the Liren, you're talking about the Liren on the ship, or is this a different Liren? Ah, uh, this is the Liren that travels between the colonies and between um, different planets. This is um, Atak here, the one that I'm, I'm most in contact with. Okay, so that's different 
from the Laren on the ship that we had talked about? Your Laren? No, because you know there's my Laren and then there was your Laren on the ship. Yeah, yeah. Um, I believe it's the same Laren. Oh, okay. But I may be wrong. Um, I may have multiple Lirans that that want to get in contact with me. But the only one that's come through so far has been Atakir. And he's uh, and he's on the ship. He's on on. He's currently. Wait a sec. Bear with me one second. I'm going to ask. Okay. He's on Gurk Fitnir at the minute. Okay. Um, he wouldn't say which colony, but he just said Gurk Fitnir. So. Um, now, can you ask? Can you ask him if it's the same one that we thought of? Uh, the one that, that interacts with your general. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. That was that was instant. <laughs> I didn't even didn't even need to do or say anything that time. It just went, yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, that's good. We have a little uh, another little puzzle, piece of the puzzle. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's so much, so much. Like, I I'd I'd really like to know how we all sort of. How we all know each other in in other timelines. Yeah. But I think That's that there'll be there'll be too many too many lives to actually. Yeah, but there'll be stronger. Ones, stronger. Oh yeah, yeah. There'll be there'll be the ones that, that most resonate. Right. And I, I feel that in this this case, Atakir and your general one are are probably the strongest resonance at the moment. And while I unlock more. I will find more. Well, you unlock more, you will find more, and then there will probably be interlocking pieces of the puzzle that we're like, ah, these guys know each other. Right. Which is pretty cool because it's, uh, I think it's amazing how we've been all over the galaxy, all over the universe, and that we're, we're all kind of Helping each other out, no matter where we go. Now, uh, let me, because James said, I don't know if you heard that, that it was really a captain and not a general. Okay. Um, a, the captain of one of the ships over the U.S., but. I don't know. I, he wasn't that sure that we were talking about the same person or being. Okay. Um, Can I ask I don't you a question, you... actually? Um, I think it was... Well, wait, um, yeah, maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Did you feel like you visited another planet? Or somewhere, somewhere in the week, just gone. Times, times moved so quickly that I've actually, I've actually forgotten what day is what. Yeah. Um, um. I can have a scan back through and see. Um. I'm trying I'm just, to remember. Just looking back through the. Uh, the conversation with Gabriel because it was it would be that day um. yeah I, I haven't which I find interesting that um, the more involved I become work for near the less I Tuesday. seem to remember it was on Tuesday. Tuesday my time has really gone quick <laughs> oh because there were a group of beings that came and picked me up, and most of them, they they looked human, but I knew they weren't. 
And there was okay. a group of us that went and visited a a red planet, a very small red planet, with a, a collection of kind of cities on it, with red like rivers of light that were floating above the land, not not situated on them. Okay. Hmm. I don't. I don't recollect that. I don't remember. But I haven't been remembering my dreams. So the, um, I have remembered dreams. Just they seem more like normal human being dreams. <laughs> um. Yeah. So so I don't remember that. Um. Yeah, no, he's not coming to me. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, no, I was just um, I had a, f I had a feeling that it may have been, may have been the same ship that you might be on about. Oh. Um, yeah, it was ship, kind of no. it was like a, yeah, it was a hexagon, like it was a hexagonal ship. Oh, okay. But that was that was the day I woke up and I had my first real taste of channeling. But it was channeling my subconscious. When you say channeling, you mean remembering what is happening? Um. Well. The best description of it was my personality that I'm speaking through now wasn't active. Um, it was as if I was traveling back from this planet and my subconscious was driving this vehicle while my other personality was fading into the passenger seat and then as it faded back in they switched back around Okay. It was a it was a strange experience, but um, I I spoke to Gabriel and um, a little bit to Frantisek. Um, I spoke on video chat to Gabriel, and he could tell that there was there was some someone else there. Even my mum, she was <laughs> she knew that I wasn't I wasn't me at the time. Yeah. But luckily enough, the sleep, the the uh, the name that he gave was um, he was quite he was quite wise to the situation, and he knew that if he said too much, my parents would have started asking questions. So he just sort of he was very indirect and kind of answered with as little detail as possible. Just to kind of keep you, my keep my mum kind of yeah without asking too many questions. But do you feel that there's still a part of you there? In other oh, words, you, that you can just take over at some point and then let it come back. And do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, he's um the best just uh, well not the best description he. He is an aspect of my subconscious. He's one one of the the sections of it. Because um, in my experience, the subconscious is it's been pushed away into the background for so long that it's been fragmented into different kind of different um, functions. So one of them runs a kind of um, speaking. One will uh, function like kind of all sorts of things. But I I felt different when I woke up, and then after two and a half hours, I felt like um, I'd kind of extended the driving seat. So that two people can control me. Okay. But 
they're not two different people, they're just two aspects of myself. Mm -hmm. If anybody else would like to chime in, ask questions. Yeah, yeah, it's, we've been speaking for ages. Yes, we... Uh, stop us at any point, please. Hello. Well, I'm, I'm just going to be right back a sec. Okay. I will. Oh, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Uh, we were so going on. Oh, uh, that's fine. I'm just being kind of an observer today. Yes, I think we have a lot of observers today. <laughs> So, any interesting experience on your side? Um, I think I might have had a dream where I interacted with one of my hybrid children two nights ago. Oh. So that was, uh, it's kind of the same format where I first met him, except this time in the dream he was like not visible, but at the same time I could uh, pick up on his energy. It was very like playful and everything. So I think that was his attempt at making uh, contact again because I kind of meditated on him a few days ago. And can you tell how old, like is it like a small child or? Oh yeah, he's um like seven years old from like I had an artist uh, channel like an image of him and she said that he was around seven years old oh okay boy or girl it's a boy his name's Alex oh I have an Alex too <laughs> oh really no, but it's it's a three D <laughs> child. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and you only have that one? Um, I'm pretty sure I have another one who's a girl and I think she has yellowish skin with like very uh, red hair. Um and then I don't know, I feel like at least two that I can pick up on consciously right now. Yeah, well that's, if you're going to have children, that's the way. Somebody else takes care of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, which to me, see I have a, a bit of a problem with that. Because, yes, they are probably taking care of them, but there's a part of me that would want to make sure um, that that was happening. Right. So I, I'm sure they they probably do take you there every so often and see. Now, how, do you know what percentage it's human on the child? Um, the well, from what uh, Takur said. He's um, part Yael, part Pleiadian, and then a little bit of reptilian, which I guess um, increased his growth rate or something on the colony or on era. So that's that was kind of interesting to find out. Increased their growth. Oh, oh, fast they grow. Yeah, I guess he. Uh, like his brain developed at a faster rate because of that one part of a reptilian in him. Mm. But that's just what uh, Joker said. So. Did they give you names, or did you have to pick them? Oh, they uh, they said Alex was the name that was. And the other one. The one. It was just the. That's the one I know of, so that's a, 
Yeah. But you, okay, so they gave it to you. You didn't pick it. Right, yeah, and they gave it to me. Interesting. I haven't crossed that road yet. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you feel like you have any or have you had I any don't. experiences? Um I know I don't yet. I actually asked today and um they need to speak with me. Hmm. Um I guess also part of it it's my concerns. I have concerns. Right. Even though I spend, I know I spend a lot of time up there, so I don't think I could probably check in whenever I want. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's a concern of mine. Um, so have you um, remembered any like trips to the colonies anymore, like vividly? No, I. I only have like seeing people passing by them, but uh -huh. the what is happening around and all of that, and seeing Tukur, like passing by Tukur. Um, but th that's really all I remember. Yeah. Uh, seeing Gabriel, um, but I don't have. Yeah, I feel like I'm, my dreams still aren't uh, being retained as much as I would like, but I also haven't, I've been kind of involved in some 3D stuff that's kind of been uh, weighing me down a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that, that, that. It's, it also grounds you, though. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it also grounds you, I think. And I think that's one thing we all have to make sure that we keep grounding ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we forget to do that and say too much in the, uh, the up there things and, and uh, we forget to ground and, and being involved in 3D, obviously, 3D things that you enjoy. Yeah. Can ground you and help you even advance uh, faster. And I think that's something that occur has stress a lot. Yeah, he's talked about like, um being present in the body, which is key to being able to retain the higher frequencies. Yeah. Yeah, she, she talked about that. Actually, she, um, she said something in a private session that I was going to do the transcript for her and put it on, on human because I thought it was very good of grounding and that kind of thing. That uh, in that sense, I don't have problems. I'm very grounded because even whenever people are speaking about something and it gets too etheric for me, I go, "Okay, but how do we apply that here right now?" You know that. Yeah. Um, and that also that usually helps because if it gets too abstract it just stays up in the mind we don't apply it right so, so it sounds good but we don't really know how to implement it um, but if, if we can say okay th he, this is the practicality how do, how do we do that Oh, Jacob came back. Wow. This is Will. You haven't been in for a while. Jacob is new. Tyler, I don't think Ty, I think I might have seen Tyler once or twice in here. 
Yeah, I usually work nights, so it's very difficult to get on these. But I usually I watch them all after y'all. Not so much the, the hangouts, but all the official videos at least. Nice. Well, welcome, Tyler. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, oh, I was just gonna say. Uh, yeah, usually I can't ever join gym sessions on Saturdays because I work as a a cook at a restaurant. So Saturdays and Sundays are kind of like my Mondays and Tuesdays. Oh yeah, that's the money day. Yeah. So in order for you for you guys to join something, like what would be a good time? Um. Usually, I guess, late afternoon tends to be a good time, at least for me. Just any day, really. So during the week, where, where are you? Are you? Um, Let's talk Eastern time, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in Eastern time. So usually uh, Thursdays and Fridays are when I don't work. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, everyone has a different schedule, so. Yeah, no, but I'm trying to, and and what what you're saying, like around three, four. What 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 time are we talking about here? Probably like four or five. Okay. And what yeah. about for you, Tyler? Um, I don't know. I'm currently, I'm actually thinking about getting another job, so, I mean, okay. right now it would probably be anywhere from 6 a.m. to about, or I'm sorry, 5 a.m., real early in the morning, you know, hmm. but I don't know how much longer I'm going to be doing this, so. Okay. Yeah, because I want to. I I I want to try and do even if it's if, if it's a webinar I want to try and schedule things where and where everybody can attend so do things at different times so um I think it will be helpful if we get you know some idea of where every some people are, especially the ones that could never attend, um, to try yeah. and, and and get it somewhere in some window where there's a possibility for you guys to attend. Well, I guess you know if Will's open on in the evenings, that's prob I could probably do that. It just kind of depends on what day it is, as far as. Um, it just kind of depends, but yeah, like evenings. Evenings are probably going to be a better shot okay. than a, as opposed to morning. So f around five. Yeah. He said, he said Thursday or Friday, right? Yeah, Thursday yeah. or Friday. And, and yours and for you Thursday or Friday is that okay? Oh, it's all the same for me. Um, every day is pretty similar. Well. I also uh, I'm going to be okay. leaving my job in two weeks, so I guess that I'd be open to anything after that point. Why are you leaving your job, Will? Um, no, it's honestly, it's, it's too low of like a frequency for me. Like working in a kitchen kitchen environment is very aggressive and testosterone, you know. Yeah. Like ten hours straight, just constant, like yelling and stuff. What are you moving to? Um. Well, I have I do writing on the like freelance writing on the side, and I think for right now I can that supports me part time. So I'm gonna use that as kind of like a leverage way to find another opportunity. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Freelance writing. I mean, what? What do you do? What is that exactly? 
Uh, well, right now I just write like uh, product descriptions for um, like small businesses that need their like websites. Okay. Kind of tuned up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. It's nice to hear other people are following their excitement. You know, I feel it feels ludicrous to drop what you're doing just because it's not what you want to be doing. I know that sounds paradoxical, but it's like yeah, it's awesome that other people are doing it. You know. Yeah, I feel like more and more people are like following the trend until you know a couple of years from now. I just foresee more people doing being exactly where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. She's going to stay with me. So what do you do, Tyler, for your job right now? So what's everyone else been up to? Um, well, this is the uh, first time I've been here live. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I... Is my microphone okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. I was wondering, like when you were talking about hmm, wishing thing, colony one or two, or like uh -huh. when you're dreaming, because I usually, you know, when I dream something intense, it's usually, you know, something, you know, bound or based to something I know. You know, it may not be, you know, like. Uh, Exactly the same, but usually, you know, it's like a, oh, the school, the area I've been to, and that may be modified. Yeah. I I just wanted to want, I wanted to check if um, I I usually don't dream, you know, like new environments, you know, like something out of my uh, visual memory. Maybe I have to. No, I understand. Yeah. I think, like, sometimes my dreams use the same physical environments that I'm used to in everyday life, but I'd actually say the majority of my dreams have, like, nothing to do with uh, my usual day-to-day -day activities. Like, usually the environments are totally new and different yeah. uh, experiences. That's all yeah. I am. Uh, yeah, I um, I, um, I, I, when I get you know like lucid dreaming, I, I'm always in you know like very um, uh, intense, you know like um, 
I'm, it's usually like I'm, you know, trapped um, in in that, you know, like that world. You know, there are boundaries, um, and they're usually, you know, people uh, with me who, who basically control the way. Uh, and many times, you know, I'm uh, basically like. Uh, Prisoner. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, what do you mean uh, by control? Like they, they tell you to do certain things, or? Yeah, I've I've had very intense dreams. You know, when I'm basically a slave. When I'm, you know, I'm I'm a captive. You know, they they hold me. Like a one time, I it was really intense. I um I was with like three people. They they looked like like, like Indians, or you know, they 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 had a skin and I I looked like I I, I, I um and, and you know they had a they, 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 like a like a and I, I realized what was happening, and we were going to some village or something, and uh, and I just started laughing at them, really, and, and they they started you know hitting me and told me to stop you know laughing because they thought I was crazy or something, but I but I knew they that they did not have any power over me and. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, because I'm really interested in, in uh, because when you guys talk about you know dreams, I, um, I, I don't have that you know kind of um, controlled uh, environment. The dreams are I don't have I don't have much control. Or you know myself. Yeah. Um. Do you um, do you spend a lot of time meditating? Yeah. Because okay. usually I find, well, at least for me during meditation, I always have an intention before I sit down of what kind of um, ideas or beings I want to explore communication with. Yeah. And through those, if you do that consistently, I've found that during dream time, um, you'll be more conscious of the intention you set beforehand. And so then during dream time, you are kind of more in control of the, I guess, the themes that you dream about or in lucid dreaming. I guess it would come about easier if you've uh, intentionally, you know, said I want more control over dreaming during meditation. Yeah, uh, yeah. I am. Um, um, <coughs> well, uh, English is not my first language, so um, um, I sometimes I think I don't really get what you know because like. Concepts you're talking about, like lucid dreaming, la la la, um, and um, like astral travel, like mm -hmm. uh, all these words, they um, they have different meanings for me, but I'm not quite sure. I know what if 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 what I think astral traveling is. If you're talking about the same thing. Like, so what what do you think? I I, I um, yeah I I meditate and uh, and I go places, but I'm not sure if um, if you would say that that is astral travel or if that is um, lucid dreaming or um, <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry words escape me. <laughs> no, I understand. So. Um, I guess what would your definition of astral travel be? 
Um, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm basically moving. I, I go somewhere, you know, in my head, and uh, you know, I can, I can walk. I can see the grass. I can, you know, I can feel the wind. Um, if 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 that's what I want to do, but uh, like um, uh, uh, I've heard you, uh, uh, not uh, just you, um, you know, you guys <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, talk about um, like uh, like conversations with other people or other entities. I am. Um, I'm not sure if I've exercised exercised it well enough to you know have the uh, control to focus on and uh, let you know the other dialect flow to me. I I haven't you know I haven't been uh, uh, I haven't had you know like conversations with with uh, anybody else like uh, like uh, consciously you know like like this <laughs> well I think the important thing to remember is that a lot of the times in your dream state even if you are communicating to another being um, oftentimes they change their form to look more human just so that you can focus on the communication rather than having an, an adverse reaction to their true appearance. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am. Um, yeah. I, uh, I understand what you mean. <laughs> I am... Um, uh, Jacob. An another thought... Um, I don't know if if um, I uh, I I read you know the the you know like the clouds and the and the and the picture of you know life. I I've been you know no, I'm not studying just by myself you know. Finding people who are, you know, like looking at, uh, you know, maps of the earth, and you know, like uh, hieroglyphs, and like, uh, like, <laughs> uh, um, like I'll paste the link. I I use this page a lot. You can just click and pause the ad. I really like the set because you can zoom in, you know, very nicely, and you can see the the Earth. It's not, you know, uh, round; it's flat. But I don't, it doesn't really matter to me because, um, uh, yeah, like um, if you're looking at the the Pacific Ocean, for example, like I. I just opened the site. I am just looking at the Pacific Ocean. Like the, there are so many faces. There are so many, you know, like the Atlantic Ocean. There is a lady, you know, with. The, I am. <laughs> I'm so bad at words. Um, yeah, like the. There, there, there are so many images, uh, and I'm, I'm not concerned if uh, because there, are, there's, uh, there's no one right answer. It's, it's what you want it to be, or what, what you decided to be. But um, I, I want to know if other people are, you know, looking at, or if, if people are seeing the same things that I'm seeing. And of course, I know that's um, kind of silly to say, um, but yes, so, uh, so you're saying it's good to talk. Sorry. Yeah. 
Jacob, if if I may, um, you said that you felt like you had no control in your dreams, like oh. uh, people were uh, people were um, more in control of you than you were, as if um, they were forcing you, kind of thing. Yeah, like I'm. Um, no, uh, yes, like I'm. I'm in this situ. I'm I'm put in a situation, and I can't get out. You know. Uh, it's like a uh, deal with this. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. with that, um, sometimes we, without even realizing it, we are, um, we dream in our dream state. We travel through to other other li other lifetimes so that we we find problem. We uh, we deal with issues that we have found in our other past lives yeah. and um, I, I too have um, felt kind of like I've been uh, surrounded during dreams yeah. and that people, people are um, they're out to get me mm -hmm. um, I also found that these were actually my biggest triggers to becoming lucid because I in most most of my waking, well, this current reality that we perceive as the waking state, everyone's generally quite nice to me. Ugh. So I I tend to pick up that when people start to go a little bit negative, they start to um, kind of start chasing me down or something like that. Uh, I then go, I then go, this is a dream, and then as soon as I go, this is a dream. I then gain full control of the dream. I can then change if I want to go somewhere else, if I wish to fly, I could teleport, I can walk through walls. There are so many uh, different things. Um, I, I've, you know, I've, I, you know, I, I've, I've many times said, you know, like, ah, oh, ah, oh, I'm dreaming and I can fly. Okay, nice. <laughs> and then I just jump and uh, just fly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but then, but, but the people, you know, they they always, you know, they look at me. They tell me to stop it, you know, don't fly. We're doing this. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to, the, the thing with it is uh, you are in command of your dream. You are okay. always in command of your, your personal universe. So you will, no matter who says stop flying, stop stop using your, your powers. Yeah. Just be like, nah, I'm okay, thank you. I'm going to walk through this wall and go off somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, I, I you know, I just have Create. to, you know, I have to realize this more and then, because I'm, I'm always getting, you know, more and more control. Yeah. Um, the, I, more, I just, the more we realize that we are, we are able to become lucid, the easier it becomes in the next set of dreams. Yeah, and uh, I think you're currently you're currently at a stage where you're you're learning to understand yourself in the dream state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I wouldn't necessarily say that you are you are trapped. You're you're creating the situation yeah, where yeah. you feel trapped, so that you can then learn from it so that you can go, this is a dream. I can now do whatever I wish. Yeah. Um, the, the thing with lucidity is that the more you actually learn about lucid dreaming, the easier it becomes in, if, you, if you ingrain it in your conscious, in your conscious waking self, you can actually I found that if I was doing like a, I was reading a book on lucid dreaming before going to sleep, I found that that helped me to almost become instantaneous lucid in the dream. Ah. Um, and the more you sort of you learn about dreaming, the more you keep a dream journal, you can actually see which triggers you have and which things actually stick out to you and go, this is a dream, this ah. is this is a message that I'm supposed to learn from. Oh, this is a thing that's causing me fear. Why is this causing me fear? Okay, yeah, cool. Um, now, I've known that, that this is a, 
say, a snake pops up in my dream. I'm not a big fan of snakes, and I'd probably get a little bit scared. But I would see that the snake is trying to teach me something about a, a hidden aspect of myself that is trying to come through that we're not noticing in our waking state. So it has to come through through our subconscious in a dream state. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There are so many, so many layers to dreams that it's, it's actually, it's quite hard to put a a, a specific <laughs> point onto, onto what what it is about the dream. But as long as you you have in your conscious mind that you are always in control of your dream. And that includes this current dream that we are in now, because we we're dreaming right now. Yeah. We may seem like we're awake, but that's how that's how much we've believed the dream to be real. And we're we're kind of we're learning that we're just learning how to control this dream as well. Yeah, I um about I, the um about the the different beings and the talking. Quite often, when we meet other beings in a dream, it may not feel like we are making a conversation in the sense that we are now. A lot of it is done through telepathy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, um, I, I, I feel that. Um, I feel what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, um, I, I have try, I try to keep a daily, you know, like dream journal, but it has been, you know, like on and off. And um, I, I, um, I know um, what I have to do. I just. I have to do. I, I just have to do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you um before you go before say like um if you're if you do a a pre sleep meditation or while you're laying in bed if you say to yourself I'm going to remember my dream. It doesn't matter which dream you remember, but I'm going to remember one dream in its entirety, and I'm going to learn from it. So teach me what I need to learn from that one dream that I'm going to remember. And then you can you can kind of build it up, get yourself confident with that one dream aspect, and then learn to bring other dreams into your memory so you can remember more dreams and you can remember more of your your experiences throughout your um, your other lives that you're living. Yeah. I um I know um I'm a part of a I'm a, you know like a I'm just another branch on a tree um of, you know of a consciousness you know I'm I'm me. But a part of me is, you know, uh, a part of another. I'm, I'm just. I, there's a, there are many of me going on. You know. We <laughs> a better, a better description of it would probably be instead of being a branch of a tree, be a leaf on a tree, which then moves through many leaves make up a branch and then that branch will have many other branches which will make up to a main stem the main stem will then lead down into the trunk and then the trunk will lead to the root which then leads back to the source of the tree yeah. but um, I definitely I definitely feel that you are you're you're almost there. It's just yeah, these, um, dreams I'm, that, these dreams that you've uh, 
you've obviously something within the dream has has made you remember the the negative ones or the ones that you perceive to be negative as the most strong I've um, yes I've, I've had you know like um, really bad uh, experiences when experiences you know when I was younger and it, uh, it has always you know uh, helped me back but uh, I am um, uh, breaking out of my shell <laughs> Sort of, sort of. Exactly. That's that's it. Just yeah. just keep going with it, man. Take it take it in your own pace and have fun with it, because <laughs> that's that's what I found is the more fun that you have in the dream, the more fun you can bring out of the dream as well. Yeah, you know, I am um, uh, because I've um, always had you know trouble with you know sleeping well. So, um, you know, like these intense, you know, bad dreams, they've, you know, they've affected me, you know, a lot in, like, my uh, awake state. Um, and then, um, like, now in the, in the, in this moment, I have been learning how to, you know, not to worry so much and uh, smile and know that it's it's just a dream. Fun. <laughs> it's just a dream. Yeah. The um the best thing about them, especially the negative ones, is that you learn so much from them. You learn who you are, you learn what, what makes you scared, what what gets you angry. Mm. They learn how to how to Stop getting yourself into these situations in other dream states and other different realities, and you're you're kind of you're training yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't don't let them don't let them eat away at your mind because if you start letting your if you start letting your your bad experience dreams live rent free in your mind then you're not able to move forward from them just allow them to allow them to be because they've happened they've they've given you what what was needed to be shown to you so just just um, say thank you for the experience to all the entities involved i love you and welcome welcome new friendly experiences welcome Meeting of new friends, welcome. Visiting other planets where you can, you know, you can you can be the creator that you wish to be. Oh, I <laughs> just set the intention. That's yeah. that is the one. Is it's all about the intention. If you if you go to sleep in a bad mood, more than likely you're going to have a a less than pleasant experience. Yeah, I'm. I have. I've been realizing, you know, these um, like these <laughs> simple facts, facts, more and more, you know. And um, uh, I feel so good that I um, joined this uh, chat tonight because I've been. Um, uh, I've, I've been watching, you know, like uh, the. Uh, Max for at least more than a year, and I uh, I was a part of a uh, few of the earlier channelings, but then I stopped uh, watching, and uh, and uh, I I'm so I'm so glad that uh, this has grown so much because it was very really small when I uh, when I uh, saw it first, and it. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it it didn't stick to me, but now I uh, I uh, I know it's um, it's for the for the best. Well, something even though it didn't stick, something obviously inside you made you want to come back. Yeah, I am. Um, so welcome back, and I look forward to seeing you again, dude. 
<rire> ouais, ouais. Euh... Ah ouais. Welcome, Sarah. And welcome back, Sabrina. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Will. Hello, Jacob. Yeah, nice hello. to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> How is everything? Oh, the question good. was for everyone. <laughs> I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing well. I just got back from teaching dance class, so... Oh, nice. Nice and limber now. <laughs> well, to answer, to answer the question to you, Sarah, I'm starting to feel a little bit tired, so I'm thinking I'm going to head to bed, which means this is going to stop the broadcast. Oh, okay. All right. But the the hangout will still continue, so everyone, please do stay on and continue, because I have a feeling that there's going to be some very profound and uh, very interesting experiences that are, are coming to you guys tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Be it be it um, perception changing. Uh, questions or answers from people, and as as Jacobs uh, found out that he's he's learned to kind of allow things a bit more. So I, I have a feeling that everyone's going yeah. to make make uh, a lot of progress this evening. Oh, and very I good. Wish, I wish you the very best of best of light, the best of love. And have have some awesome experiences, guys. Thanks, Dan. All right. Good night. Thank so you. Yeah, good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night, and Sabrina. Good night. I will ask. I will ask my Liren if um, a little bit more about yours, if I'm allowed to find out, because sometimes they don't they don't like to. Uh, tell about other entities so if I find out anything I will let you know right, much love to you all and I will see you in the next now mm -hmm. alright namaste yes good night <laughs>